Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about the stability of proteins upon amino acid substitutions. In the previous lecture, we discussed about identifying the stabilizing residues in protein structures. For example, if you know a structure, which residues are important for the stability. So, we use various criteria like hydrophobicity or long range uh, contacts and conservation to identify stabilizing residues right, in protein structures. In the later part, we discussed about the database, the thermodynamic database for proteins and mutants, the protham. It contains the data for the proteins as well as mutants, right, obtained from different experimental techniques like sector dichroism or defensive scanning calorimetry, fluorescent spectroscopy, and so on. So, here now we will see what will happen if we mutate a specific amino acid residue protein. Here you see there is a central residue here, so this is a central residue. If you mutate this particular residue with any other residues, currently this residue is making contacts with other residues in the protein. If you mutate this residue, it may lose the contact or it may make additional contacts, right, depending upon the type of mutations and where you mutate, either depending on the secondary structures or the location based on accessibility. So, here I show some types of amino acid residues, right. Here you can see the positive charge residues, lysine arginine, and aliphatic residues. If we mutate alanine to valine, what will happen? If we see alanine here, if we mutate this alanine to valine, so whether it stabilize or destabilize, or this will make contacts or it will make a steric, right. So, that depends upon the location where you mutate, right. Like if we mutate aline to lysine, what will happen? This is stabilize the protein or destabilize the protein? Destabilize. Destabilize the protein if uh, this is in the buried state. If it is in the, uh, located in the exposed and there is a nearby residue called say aspartic acid, glutamic acid, and in this case that can make solvates, right? Fine. So, if you see this mutation, if you mutate alanine to valine, Either this will make a collision, steric hindrance, or it can well packed depending upon where the alanine is located and how far space is available, right, nearby this residue. Like this, if we mutate valine to alanine, it can create a cavity by destabilizing protein, or you can freely move. So, if you say alanine to aspartic acid, either make the electrostatic interactions, right, or may destabilize. Right, likewise, lysine to leucine. So, if you mutate a specific residue in a protein, so it may alter the structure or alter stability as well as alter the function. Right. Some of them may also lead to diseases. For example, the hemoglobin, if you mutated glutamic acid 6 to valine, it causes sickle cell anemia. Like if it is a P53, right, it is a DNA binding protein. If you make a mutation, specifically arginine mutation, right, this will uh, last the binding affinity. Finally, it may lead to certain types of cancers. Now, I show some examples. So, there is a negative charge residue and you have positive charge residues. Right? If you it is close to each other, then they can make ion pairs. If you mutate this positive charge to negative charge, right? if you mutate this one, then what will happen? Here are these two residues are negative charge. So, they uh, make the repulsive interaction. So, in this case, they may destabilize the particular protein. The second example, if there are res two residues and this is small residue. So, a big residues, this is not representing charge, this is a small uh, big two big residues and this is small residue. For example, here to uh, valine right, and here you can see this alanine. If we mutate this alanine to leucine, what will happen? Here if you see lot of space, so because we mutate alanine to leucine, which one is bigger one? Leucine, right? Here you put leucine here, right? Here is valine. So, this occupy all the space, this is a cavity filling mutation, and this is more compact, 
in this case this will stabilize the protein. On the other hand if there are two valines here and the alanine is here the same if you mutate alanine to val leucine A to L with this L now then this are V. So, what will happen is there is no space for leucine to accommodate here because it is a very less space where only alanine can accommodate and we mutate alanine to leucine. So, here this will create steady hindrance and this will destabilize the particle protein. So, the stability of a protein upon mutation it depends on the location and which residues you, uh, you mutate right as well as where you mutate that particular residue. So, how to understand right the factors which influence the stability in this case we use the database right which database contains the data Protham right Protham contains the data it has more than 25,000 uh, entries and more than 12,000 or 13,000 single mutants. So, now we can search this database based on various search options available for example, you can see the mutation single and you can see different types of other uh, options available in the database and finally, you will get the data. Once we get the results, then you can download the data and utilize the data to understand the factors which can which can stabilize or destabilize particular protein. So, how to understand, how to estimate the contribution of different uh, properties, which property can relate the stability. Protham gives you experimental data right either you can get the delta T m or delta L g this is the transition temperature the melting temperature and delta L g you can get this free energy change. Right. So, delta L g you can get this equal to delta G mutant minus delta G wild. Experimental data can provide the delta G values for the wild type and for the mutant and you can calculate delta delta G using the equation right delta G mutant minus delta G wild right this is known like delta T m also you can cal you can uh, calculate if the experimental data are available. Then the other side so to which properties you want to relate right because we know there are several behavior of these amino acid residues what are the characteristic features of different amino acid residues. You can polarity, hydrophobicity, right, alpha helical forming tendency, right, the free energy, right, various properties. So, on the other hand, you can take the different properties. The properties you take from different perspectives, for example, size, there are several physical properties, for example, molecular weight. Right? In this case, you can see the glycine has less weight than the other residues, and you can see the bulkiness. There are some residues which are uh, very bulk compared to other residues right some of them are loose and some of them are very bulk and you get the shape and the volume refractive index and so on there are many properties right you can deal with the physical behavior. There are several chemical properties right for example, heterophobicity and polarity isoelectric point right several chemical properties and so energetic properties short range interaction energy how the two residues are in contact with each other based on short range or medium range or long range the frequency of occurrence of these residues compared with the all the residues within that range you can convert this into potentials and then from this one you can get the energy. So, let us say non long range non bond energy right you can see the for each residue how we can make with other residues. Then you can get enthalpy, entropy, free energy and so on these are the properties you can calculate for each residue right for example, if you have the molecular weight you have 20 values for the 20 residues right for the volume for 20 residues you have 20 values like likewise you have the confirmation properties right how to get the confirmation properties right we get the propensity right how to get the propensity of alpha helix right for any residue i you can get the take any residue i in alpha divided by the residue of i the whole protein normalized with n alpha divided by n right these are two, any total number of uh, residues in a protein how many residues in alpha helical conformation like for any residue i how many residues in alpha helical re conformation and how many uh, residues type i present in the protein. So, you can calculate alpha helical propensity. So, what will you get the propensity how many values you get 
20. 20 values, 20 values for the 20 residues, right. Like as beta you get 20 values, right, you get the 20 values. Now, for the property wise, each property you have 20 values for the 20 amino acid residues. On the side, you have the experimental data, right. Now, how to relate, how to relate the experimental data with these properties? Take for any property, right, for example, P. So, in this case, you can take the difference in properties delta P of i, which is given as P mutant i minus P wild of i. So, for example, you, this is a P mutant is property of the mutant residue and wild is the property of the wild type residue. For example, you take the shape, shape tells you the branching, for example, alanine there is no branch. For example, if you take the leucine 1, 2, 1, 2, second uh, uh, CH you get the loop uh, the branch. So, in this case shape of this leucine equal to 2, shape of this alanine equal to 0. If A is mutated to uh, leucine, it is not easy, it is leucine and then A is mutated to leucine. So, delta shape equal to shape of this leucine this equal to 2 minus shape of this alanine that is equal to 0 this equal to 2. Okay, this is the shape of leucine, this is the shape of alanine. So, alanine this equal to 2, this is not so clear. Okay, this is the shape of leucine, this is the shape of alanine. So, the subtract will get the value 2. For activity hydrophobicity, for example, uh, uh, you convert this alanine to leucine. Alanine you can say 13.8. 85. Leucine if this equal to 15.20, then this for example, if you take the hydrophobicity. What delta HP? This equal to right HP of leucine minus, minus HP of alanine. You will get this value, this equal to what is leucine? 15.2 minus 13.85 this equal to 1.35. So, for any property right, you can calculate the delta P of i, if you know the mutant residue and the wild type residue. So, now if you have 100 mutants, take any particular property for example, hydrophobicity, for the 100 mutants you can calculate delta H p, right you have 1, 2, 3, right you know the delta H, delta G. You take the hydrophobicity, you have the value of HP1, HP2, and so on. Now, if you take the difference, this will be delta HP, delta HP. So, you have 100 data for the free energy, 100 data for the properties, and you can take the correlation. This will tell you whether this property is related with the stability or not. So, how to see whether it is related or not? Correlation. correlation. What is the range of correlation? It takes from R varies from minus 1 to plus 1, if it is plus 1 that means directly correlated minus 1, inversely correlated if it is 0, no correlation right. So, it can go from minus 1 to plus 1, so with this based on this numbers we can tell how far a particular property is correlated with stability. So, now if you take any type of mutations for example, some varied mutation, what is varied mutation? Mutations are in the core of the particular protein, so if we say certain accessibility is less than 5 percent. If you mutate any specific residue in the core, what are the normally occurring residues in the core? Leucine, alanine, valine, hydrophobic residues. Right? If you mutate it, right, we will get the free energy already there. So, which properties right, reflect this stability with good correlation? You can check various properties. Here I showed the 49 properties, and all the data you can get uh, in our website, original values for all the different uh, properties. If you look the 14 properties and relate these 14 properties with stability, some properties right which have good correlation. For example, with the mutation is in the buried, mainly the properties reflecting hydrophobicity right they have good correlation with the stability. So, here I show one example right x axis is a difference in hydrophobicity and y axis is the free energy change and you can see there are good correlation between hydrophobicity and stability. So, I show another example. Okay, here if you see a uh, glutamic acid at portion 49 is mutated to different residues, right. What is secondary structure for this uh, mutant? 
strand. strand. Okay, this is strand. Where it is located? Where it are exposed? Right, we have the ASA. So it is zero point four. That is less than one. Right, if you take the less than five cut off, then this is buried. So because this value varies up to from zero to hundred, so it is point four less than one. So we can take this as the buried one. So now if we see which properties reflect better correlation with this delta energy H two O. This is the experimental data, and we have several properties. Okay, this is the buried one, and a strand mutation. So we can use the hydrophobicity values to see whether this can have good correlation or not. Right? In this case, you can draw a graph. Here, this is the delta H G M. Right? This is hydrophobicity scale, and here you can see delta delta G H two O. For example, we take the first mutation. What is the first mutation? E four nine G. So, how to get the values? Right, H G M of G minus H G M of E. So, what is G? Thirteen point three four minus what is E? Eleven point three eight. What is the value? One point nine six. For this case. The value is one point nine six, right? One point nine six, and the second one, we do this is two point four seven, and the third one E forty nine V, so with this a V minus E, right? This is equal to three point one eight. Why E forty nine I? This is equal to three point nine zero. E forty nine L, this two point seven five. E forty nine P, how to do this E forty nine P? Twelve point three five minus thirteen point no, minus one point three eight, right? This is the uh, e, right? This is equal to zero point nine seven. And e forty nine y two point five zero and two point five five. So you can get the values. For the last one, e forty nine s, yes. sorry, about two point zero one. So now you plot this as x axis. And this is y axis. You can plot. First one, if you take uh, one point nine six, one, two, three, four. So one point nine six and minus one point seven, minus two, minus four, zero, two, four. Okay. So in this case, what is the number? One point nine six and minus one point seven. Somewhere here. And second one, two point four seven minus zero point three. Minus zero point three is somewhere here, right? And the third one, this is E forty nine G. Three point one eight is somewhere here. E forty nine V, somewhere here. So you can plot all these twenty values, and then if you see there is a good positive correlation. Right? Finally, you get a correlation of zero point six or more. Uh, R is more than zero point six. So if you relate the hydrophobicity with the lateral energy, with the mutation is in the strand, right? And it is in the buried region. You can see a good correlation between hydrophobicity and stability. So at the same time, if you have another set of mutations, if the mutant is not at the buried, right? You can see here. So the mutation is at the exposed. Right? This is the Y20 uh, tyrosine 26. Right? Here this is the tyrosine 26 exposed. Uh, this is in coil. Then what will happen? Here, if you mutate this residue, can we see the same trend that hydrophobicity has direct correlation with stability? Right, let's see. So this is the data. So here, if you see the hydrophobicity scale, so this is the values. Here also, I showed that we here we tried the HGM. This figure with the HP. So in this case, if you use different scales, you can see similar uh, behavior, uh, positive correlation or the negative correlation. So here we have this uh, hydrophobicity values, and here this is the delta delta G. So why this is located? 
exposed because this is ASA, so the ASA 76.23 is highly exposed and this is in coil region. And see whether you have any trend with the heterophobicity. So, here you can uh, make a graph, this is the delta H T, here you can see delta delta G. Let us calculate the values, okay, so this is uh, Y 26 W, what is the value? What is the value of W? 3.77 for the y 2.67, so this equal to 1.1 and the second one uh, 0 0.2, 2.87 minus 2.67 this is 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.5 this is q minus 2.67 h minus 1.8 y 26 c minus 1.15 and uh, y 26 d d is 0 0.66 so minus 2.01 right. Now, you can, you can uh, make a plot connecting the hydrophobicity and the stability where you can see you can see that oh, stability is almost this is fine this is 0, 1, 2, 3 or oh, here this value is minus 2 up to minus 3 right. This is minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. What is the first one? Why 26 W? 1.1 minus 0 0.1 somewhere here. And the second one y 26 f, this is point 0 0.2 somewhere here and y axis 0 0.4 somewhere here. And the third one y 26 v minus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 somewhere here, y 26 l minus 0 0.5 somewhere here and 1.1 1 .1, right this is 1 point somewhere here, y 26 q minus 2.67, 1.4, 1 y 26 h minus 1.8 and 1 1.9, y 26 c minus 1.15, 2.2. Y 26 D minus 2.01 and 2.7 somewhere here. How about the correlation here? You can see inverse correlation and the correlation coefficient are equal to 0 0.79. So, if you see the, log, the mutations, one is at the surface in the coil region, one is the buried. So, the buried one we can see a direct relationship between the hydrophobicity and stability. But in the case of the coil mutation, look at the surface, right? You can see the inverse relationship between the stability as well as uh, the heterophobicity, right? In this case, the first time they reported in 1990 that the heterophobicity has inverse relation with stability. That means increase in heterophobicity decreases stability for this particular protein, and they published this paper in Nature. Now the question is, if you see this behavior, this behavior is universal or not? You can see the same trend, right? Everywhere for many pro many mutants, or this only for this one, right? If you see the, how to do this analysis, go to Pratham. For example, here another important aspect is we look at the single mutation. We do not take the mutation from different proteins, right? The same pro Y26 here we consider. The, the last example we consider the E49. This is the location, same protein. So you can take go to the Pratham database and search for the mutations in any single point whether at least more than 5 to 6 mutants. If it is available then you take all this information and you relate them to different properties. So, we have 49 properties all the values are available take each property get the correlation. Now, if you see most of the cases if, the, if it is exposed you can see this reverse trend and if it is buried 
and many cases you can see the positive trend. If there is other places for example, helix or strand or coil buried partially buried and exposed which is 14 properties and you can see different trends. For example, if it is helical mutation you may get a good correlation between the stability and helical propensity or beta strand mutation this long range interaction energy there may have good relationship with the beta strand mutations right. You can do the analysis and you can see okay, very the common behavior to understand the relationship between any properties as well as with the stability that you can easily do with the correlation coefficient. In this mutation we just analyzed the variation of properties there is only one property right here in this case if you we consider only the relationship between the properties and stability just change the properties and then stability. In many cases it will work but if you consider many mutants from different proteins right you may end up with the any less correlation between any of the properties and the stability. If this is the case right for example, uh, same mutation for y is mutated to lesion right so, same buried sometimes it may decrease the stability and sometimes it may increase the stability. In this case if we consider only the property you cannot account you cannot account the both stabilize and destabilize. For this situation what can we do? So, one aspect is we can get the information regarding neighboring residues. For example, if uh, T is the central residue and T is mutated to valine, here there is another uh, 3 one in this is also mutated to valine right for example, this T is mutated to valine this T is also mutated to valine and one place this will uh, destabilize for example, this place it will stabilize. In this case if you take the property values any property value of valine minus 3 1 n you get one value, but the value is the same even if you take here this position or this position. If this destabilize and the second one stabilize then it is difficult to account both the cases. For this case you look to the neighboring residues for example, in this 3 1 n right if you take uh, this t it is neighboring is r and d. Then you put the condition 3 1 n is mutated to valine but the neighboring residue contains polar residues or charged residues then this will destabilize. If the 3 1 n is mutated to valine and the neighboring residue is heterophobic residue then this will stabilize. So, in this case you can distinguish the mutations same mutation at different locations depending upon the residues which are neighboring with this particular residue. So, how to account in terms of properties? you can take any window length for example, we take this and this window length of 3 or here to here window length of 5. So, you can use uh, sigma j equal to i minus k equal to sigma j equal to i plus k i is the central residue k is the window length either from uh, left side or at the right side. So, take any window length and get the values. So, in this case you can get the property value for any window length right for this you can see window length this is you can take it as a while table values. Then you can subtract the mutations then you can include the sequence information and get this p sequence of i. Now, this p sequence of i is influenced with the property values plus the neighboring industry information right. When you add this you can account the mutants right which are occurring in this different places right the same mutations. This is how to include the sequence. You can also include the structure information when you mutate a specific residue for example, this 3 1 n right this is mutated to valine you can see this 3 1 n is surrounded by different residues. We take this 3 1 n right here you have the different circle this is surrounded with different residues. You can take into account of the residues which are occurring within the limit of the state angstrom and substitute the values and if you add this then will the value of this t will change from this value this t this you can account to uh, the structural information like say sigma p j of i where here i is the any central residue p j is the property of the residue j which is surrounded with this residue i. This number will change based on the location of your mutant. In this case given if you mutate the same residue to the same residue for example, 3 1 into valine or align into, align into uh, tryptophan depending upon the location you can you can get different values and in this case you can 
uh, account the stability of these mutations which are having the different positions and similar type of mutations. So, we discussed three different types one aspect is you can directly calculate the change in property and that you can relate with the stability values. If the two mutations are same then you can add sequence information how to account the sequence, sequence information neighboring residues you can take neighboring residues here we use different window lengths you can start from 3 right 3 5 7 so you can up to you can change the window length and see to which window length you can get the best fit. So, you can, you can optimize the window length depending upon your problem. How to include the structural information change in right you can see the central residue. So, from the central residue you can make a sphere and account the residues which are occurring within the limit and take the average property values. This space you can change that you can say from 4 angstrom to 14 angstrom in term in, in with the different intervals say 1 angstrom or 0.5 angstrom and now we can optimize this uh, space to account the stability of this particular mutations. Essentially if you see it around 68 angstrom is sufficient to accommodate the medium range interactions and the long range interactions it may work well to understand or to account the stability upon mutations right in terms of the surrounding residues plus the mutant residues right we can do that. So, we can relate m energy properties and the stability. So, for this will give you which type of information right you can understand okay, which properties are important and uh, depending upon the mutation type whether it is a buried mutation or exposed mutation is helix strand or coil. Mm -hmm.